here with Maria Taylor. You've seen her on College Game Day. You've seen her covering the NCAA Final Four, women's coverage. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to, to chat with you about women in sports. Yeah, glad to be here. Glad we finally made it work. Yes, <laughs> yes. We're from uh, similar hometowns, about 15 minutes apart, so glad this can work out that you're in town. Actually, let's clarify. We're rivals. I went to Centennial, you went to Roswell. We don't get along in theory, but we're making it work. Go ahead. Okay, nice. I would describe you as the other school <laughs> in oh, Roswell, is what I would say, but... But I'm an Alpharetta. Okay, no, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, okay. I'm an Alpha right now, so I guess we there you got go. that, that mm -hmm. commonality. All right, so I just want to, uh, first, let's talk about um, how you got started in sports. Obviously, you had a broadcasting career in sports, but where did sports start for you? I think for me, it started at a very young age. I mean, I played softball when I was in first grade, um, and then that kind of transitioned into basketball when I moved to Georgia and came in the sixth grade, and my best friend was like, come join a church league with me, and I just felt like, these are my people, like I love being around um, competition, I love athletes, and the idea of waking up competing every day, getting better, being able to watch yourself get better, being able to see your you know free throw percentage go from 70 to 85 or, or anything like that. Um, and of course, when I graduated from college, I, I knew I wanted to find a way to stay in sports. I knew I did not want to be a coach, and um, I knew I didn't want to play anymore. So it, it was just a matter of kind of whittling down the options that I had, and sports broadcasting ended up being the one that stuck because so many people came and covered our women's volleyball matches. And I remember thinking, I was like, wow, someone cares enough about women's basketball to cover it and ask us questions about our journey and what's the best way to talk about your team. And I, and I just thought I wanted to be the same person that goes on the road it does that for something else and you, you mentioned you're a multi-sport athlete um, and you play two sports in college which now is really pretty much unheard of right um, what did sports teach you everything um, sport taught me how to fail fast you know, you miss a layup on one possession, but you might get the ball in the exact same spot on the next possession. What are you going to do? Are you going to be thinking about the fact that you failed last time, or are you going to make that free throw, or are you going to make that layup? And so that's something that instantly you learn. You learn about adversity. You learn that if you, you get the same thing out of the game as what you put in it. So if I'm not putting a lot of effort towards my uh, swing as a volleyball player, then you know I'm going to get blocked a lot, and my hitting percentage is going to be low, and that's on me. Um, so it's a lot about self-discipline. Um, growing yourself in the game. It's about studying film. It's about all the things that you need in the corporate world or even as a parent to know. Um, so it's just taught me to be a stronger individual, to deal with adversity, and to, to work hard and always strive for better. Like you never, as an athlete, you never accept your last performance as the best, right? Because you know you can always do better. And so that's how I feel like I approach life. That's great. That's obviously why you've been successful. Why would you say it's important for young girls in 2018 to be playing Ooh. sport? It's so important. Number one, because I think that women in our society need to recognize that their body is not just sitting on a pedestal for men to judge. It's not just for putting on Instagram or sending a Snapchat. It's about power cleaning and squatting and look at what my body can do when I, I run this fast or how much faster I can be or you know, look, I'm weightlifting every day or I couldn't do a pull up when I showed up at college, but now I can. Um, that's how strong my body is and no one else has control over that body but me. And that's what sports taught me. And I do think that you know, young women that don't compete in sports maybe have less of a confidence in their body and what it's capable of than someone who has been competing in sports at a high level or even at a lower level because um, they, understand, they understand what they can do. So for me, it's it's just as much about physically having confidence in your body as it is mentally being trained tougher. Um, and that's what women will learn as well. And uh, I think too, it just creates these incredible bonds that you would never have. You know, some of my best friends in the whole world I played sports with, um, you know, they're from all over. When I got to school at Georgia, I had a Puerto Rican volleyball player, two German volleyball players, and then my best friend was from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and she went to a Catholic school and was the sweetest person on earth, and I went to a public school, you know, 30 minutes outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and we're all together, and we're on one team. So learning how to um, tie bonds with different people that you never thought that you would meet in life also is what sports teach you. How are you able to apply those things to your career? You've had, a, again, a very successful career. What things did you take into that and, and, and use to be successful? I think in my career, it's, a, it's about how you relate to others. So when you're on a team, you have to, maybe I speak to my setter a little bit differently than I speak to my libero or my point guard as I do, you know, the center that I work with because their personalities are different. 
some people you can talk to, you know, me like, hey, get it next time or whatever. And the next person you're like, hey, you got it next time. So your approach is going to be different. And I take that into the corporate world or in broadcasting. I meet players and I recognize what their personality is. Do I come in ragging them and joking with them or do I come in with praise um, and then work my way back? And so it's the interpersonal skills and how do you connect with others? You learn that through being on a team. Um, and I've always been very receptive to that. And I, and I want to make sure that people leave me feeling a little bit better than they were when I walked up to them or walked into a room or something like that. So that's something that being on a team taught me because you have to deal with every type of person and every type of coach and then I can use it now in the corporate world. Yeah, and now you're you're dealing with a lot of personalities, reporting and doing analysis. Um, what things have you seen as a woman in the industry? I mean, you, you cover a lot of football, which is a male-dominated yep. sport. Um, what things have you learned being a woman in that sport? Um, I've learned that you have to tell yourself every day that you belong in that space because you will feel like you don't belong. You know, you have to be your number one champion because there's not going to be that many people necessarily just sitting down fighting for you. You will have male advocates, um, but obviously you're not going to hear their voices as much because they're, they don't understand, they can't emphasize with you because they haven't been in your shoes no matter how hard they really try. They think they know but have no idea. Um, and so, you know, I've been in situations where you go into a team meeting where you, I'm with my producer and my director and my play-by-play -play and the analyst and everyone's a man, probably a white male, and the coach comes in, introduces himself to everyone but me. Um, and I had to learn that I'm going to have to stand up and lead the introduction, and that's okay. I've had to learn that I, if I have a question to ask, I have to be okay with asking that question, like not to shy away from the room or the table, to just be comfortable, um, to be okay, you know, being an insider. So just as much as my play-by-play or analyst can have the head coach's number, I can too. And it's not, it's not about anything other than I'm doing my job. You know what I mean? I can have inside access as well. And so I'm just now really learning how to use, flex that muscle and that power and treat myself like I belong in the space. And a lot of that is just a positive talk and a belief in yourself that, to be honest, I didn't have at first, but several years later in the business, I do. If you had to give one, the show is called Major Keys. Sure. Okay. If you had to give one major key to um, people coming up in the industry, women in sport, um, if you could give them one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, I would say if you're doing it for yourself or selfish ambitions, you will fail and not, or not be fulfilled. So you have to find what is that thing that you are really working towards, like what is your purpose in life? Like I would say find that first, um, your purpose and your passion and then follow those things. But if you just, you know, I don't know if it's selfishly you want to be on TV or you want to do certain things, then even when you get there, you're not going to enjoy it. Like you would never be happy. So I would just say check your motives. <laughs> watch them all the time check back in with them I check back in with my motives all the time like am I doing these things for the right reasons um, and, and it'll just help make sure that the steps that you're taking are the ones that um, like are on the path that you're, you've actually been set course on well that actually led me to another question mm -hmm. what would you say are your motives in this industry to bring the next generation of women and minorities up like I have said I want to be a mirror where someone can turn on the TV, a young girl can say, oh, she looks like me and I can be her, but I also want to be a window to her future. I want her to see through me and say, oh, this is what my future can look like. Um, so that's what fuels me a lot of times. That's what gets me from Washington State to Purdue to New York to wherever I need to be. It energizes me knowing that um, doing what I do matters to someone else and will help them blaze a path of their own, you know. Well, I can tell you firsthand, you're definitely doing that. To see you on television and see you on ESPN, it's just, again, being so close sure. from where I'm coming from and mm -hmm. wanting to do the same thing that you're doing, it's um, it's indescribable to be here and to be able to have this interview. So I thank you so much for yeah. it, and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. For sure, it's good yeah. to be here with you. I'm proud of you for making you know your own experience, creating your own opportunities, and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Thank you so much. Keys, keys, keys. I got the keys.